Hi there, here is a year one macro topic video looking at the Human Development Index or the HDI for short. So let's think about the, the basics of the Human Development Index it's introduced by the United Nations in 1990. The index is based on three sets of important indicators, uh, the generic terms for which are knowledge, long and healthy life and the decent basic living standards. Uh, so in other words, the HDI um, quantifies three important areas to try to give a fuller picture of human development than just by pure GDP alone. So the knowledge component has an educational aspect made up of mean years of schooling and expected years of schooling, primary and secondary, so and so on. The health aspect includes the minimum value for life expectancy of 25 years and maximum value of 85 and some disaggregated data within it. And the third aspect of HDI is income per capita. So we do include gross national income per head of population uh, measured in the common currency of the US dollar and adjusted for purchasing power parity. So we have three separate components of HDI, each of which has an equal 33% weighting. A gross national income is now used because of the mittens flow is becoming more significant. And there is a separate, a separate topic video looking at the economics of remittances on our YouTube channel. Uh, OK, so the HDI score in total can be between 0 and 1. Don't forget each component counts for one third. And uh, we'll look at some of the data in a second. Uh, the log of income is used in HDI calculations because clearly as incomes go up, that creates more economic opportunities. But there is an assumption built into the model that higher incomes make a declining or a diminishing contribution to, to human development. So the key point about HDI, it has three components, knowledge, aka, uh, education, health and income. So here are countries that appear in 2015 at right at the top of the HDI. Norway topped the table again in 2015. Australia came second, Switzerland third. And you can see the UK some way down the table now. These are the highest performing countries on the HDI. And in many, many cases, of course, it's because they have a substantial per capita income. But notice, for example, that Australia outperforms Singapore on HDI, despite the fact that uh, Singapore has a, a GNI per capita of $76,000, whereas Australia's GNI per capita is only $42,000. So Australia outperforming uh, Switzerland um, in other areas, uh, Singapore in other areas. South Korea, a country that's made huge development progress in the last 15, 20 years, now appears in the league table of top performing HGI countries. If we go to the bottom, these are the countries at the low point of the Human Development Index table for 2015. And the country with the worst HGI score uh, last year was Niger. Central African Republic and Eritrea and Chad also right at the bottom. Again, if you want to look at some of the data here in more detail, just press the pause button and you get a feel and a flavour for the reasons why these countries have such a low per capita income. Of course, it's to do in large part with the very low level of GNI per capita, in some cases less than $1,000 uh, per year. Uh, but it's also, of course, due to very low life expectancy and... Uh, in many cases, very, very low mean years of schooling. So, for example, in Niger, the mean expected years of schooling, uh, assuming that schooling starts, let's say, the age of five or six, is only 5.4. The actual mean years of schooling, less than 1.5. Here are the countries with the lowest life expectancy. In 2013, a key component of the health aspect of the HDI. And you can see that in these countries all have a life expectancy of less than 56 years. This table is quite interesting. It takes a country whose HDI outcome, or ranking if you like, is better than its international ranking in terms of national income per capita. It's quite an interesting data, data set. So for example, Cuba uh, scores very, very highly on educational and health outcomes but it's a relatively low per capita income country. But overall, its, uh, its HDI rank is 67, whereas its uh, income per capita rank is about 108th. 
So Cuba scores much better on HDI than if you just ranked countries by their national income per capita. And uh, these are the countries that do best in terms of that. If you like, these are the these are the nations with a stronger relative development performance than their per capita incomes would necessarily imply. Countries such as Ukraine, Sri Lanka, uh, Palestine, uh, Nepal, Vietnam, etc. All in there. Quite interesting data. What about the other side? Well, these are countries whose HGI ranking is worse than their ranking on GNI per capita. The obvious and significant outlier is Equatorial Guinea. Notice there they have a per capita income, PPP adjusted over more than $21,000 a year. Uh, but a human development index, 0.587, places them only 138th on the HDI. We tend to find, for example, that resource-rich countries, Kuwait, Iraq, UAE, Qatar, oil-rich Angola, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and Nigeria, for example, Ivory Coast. These are countries where their human development outcome is significantly worse than if they if we just looked at their per capita incomes. And that raises important questions about whether growth of an economy and rising incomes actually feeds through to improved development outcomes in the basics of education and health. The HDI, of course, is a composite measure. It's a widely known and widely respected measure of basic human development, but it does have its weaknesses, and this is important to be aware of when you're evaluating the HDI. So the HDI fails largely to take into account of qualitative factors, such as the strength of cultural identity and the resilience and the scope of political freedom. Do people, for example, live in a tolerant society where they're free to express their own views and to express dissent. That's really quite important. Do people have a basic sense of security? Do governments respect human rights? Well, the HDI doesn't really capture these important, uh, intangible, but significant aspects of our daily life. HDI uses GNI per capita, so therefore the unadjusted HDI figure doesn't make any adjustment for uh, inequality of income or wealth. Uh, if income is unevenly distributed, then GNI per capita will tend to be fairly inaccurate of the well-being of, of many people. And uh, the PPP adjustment used to calculate GNI per capita, well, that could be a little inaccurate. It could be misleading, causing countries to rise or fall down the rankings. Important point to bear in mind is that in recent years, the United Nations Development Programme, UNDP, have published a separate set of data on HGI adjusted for income inequality, HGI adjusted for multi-dimensional poverty, the many things that make poverty an issue, and crucially HGI adjusted for the depth and the scale of gender inequality. We'll just touch on a couple of those right now. So this is income inequality adjusted HGI. These are the countries with the lowest levels of income inequality. There are various ways of measuring it. The quintile ratio is the ratio of the richest quintile, 20%, to the bottom quintile, 20%. The Palmer ratio is the income of the top 10% divided by the income of the bottom 40. And the more widely understood and recognised Gini coefficient is an overall measure of income inequality. So you can see here that countries such as Norway, Australia and Switzerland, they're high up on the... Uh, HGI measure and they're also very high up on the income inequality adjusted measure. These are countries that broadly speaking have a low level of income inequality as shown by their published Gini coefficient. You can see there the figure for the UK, the HGI value 0.907 falls to 0.829, an overall loss of 8.6% if we adjust for income inequality. Okay, now what about countries with very high levels of inequality. These are where the HGI value and the income, in, income inequality adjusted HGI will be very different. So take, for example, South Africa. Its HGI value is 0.666, but you, it loses 35.7% of HGI when you adjust for income inequality. If you look across to the right-hand side, South Africa has a very, very high level of the Gini coefficient one of the highest in the world, in fact, uh, 
uh, countries such as uh, the Seychelles, Botswana and Namibia are right up there. So these are countries with very, very high income inequality and the HGI figure can be adjusted for that. These are the countries here with the lowest income inequality. And finally, let's look at gender issues, gender inequality. Here are some of the indicators they use to make the calculation. So they look, for example, at mater maternal mortality ratios, number of deaths per 100,000 live births. They look at the adolescent birth rate. They look at political indicators such as the share of seats in Parliament and the population, female population with at least some secondary education and also the number of females as a percentage who are actively participating in the labour force. So these are the countries with the lowest gender inequality. And in 2014, that country was Slovenia, Switzerland, Germany and Denmark tucking in behind. If you want to look at the detail in this uh, data, just press the pause button and you can see some of the reasons why. In stark contrast, these are the countries with the highest gender inequality in the world. And that country uh, is the Yemen. They have a relatively low mat maternal mortality rate compared, for example, to Chad and Niger, but they have significant negative outcomes, including, for example, less than 1% of the seats in Parliament held by women and the labour force participation of just over a quarter, just 25%. So these will be countries to use in the exam of countries where gender inequality is starkly different to uh, the countries we saw, in the, we saw in the previous chart. So what we've done in this short video, we've focused on what the HDI is. It's a composite measure of development. We know that the weighting between the three items, health, education, income, is 33%. We've started to evaluate some of the, the weaknesses of the HDI. And we've recognised that there are now different published measures for human development, including the income inequality measure and the gender inequality measure. Now, of course, there are alternative measures of development. And we'll cover those in a separate topic video. But for now, this was our video on the Human Development Index.